Hi, Dawn Lewis here with a Copic colouring video that is a companion video to the exploding box card that I have made. You can see that video on my channel, but right now I thought I would keep the Copic colouring separate just because this is a pretty big project. And this colouring, well, we're colouring a queen. So, you know, she deserves some little special time. So this is a set called Let Us Eat Cake. It's by Kindred Stamps and of course we are colouring Marie Antoinette. Now I know at that time things were very different, makeup was different, hair was different, times were really different. So I tried to keep her pale so I'm using E0s for her skin tones but back then According to the portraits and the paintings, of course there are no photographs, she enjoyed a rosy cheek. So I've taken this pink and you can see all the colours I'm using on the left of screen and I've kind of dabbed it on because it wasn't really... Well, I don't know if it was the oil painting technique or the fashion of the time, but it wasn't a smooth blush application, if you know what I mean. So to go with those rosy cheeks, and it looks like she was a fan of colored hair like the pastel pink the purple she had old lady hair before old ladies invented old lady hair so we've I've given her a pink ensemble just I was feeling the pink I could have gone with purple but I was feeling the pink and I really wanted to go with that so back then she had these huge big sort of I don't know if it's a crinoline skirt, but big skirts, really big skirts and lots of frills and fluff and embellishments. I mean, in this tiny little stamp, there's quite a lot of detail. Now, if you're unsure of how to color and shade this dress, please feel free to just shade where I've shaded. I've done my best to make it I don't know, pick up where the highlight would have been on the roundest parts of her dress, where the, the light would have hit and then throw the shadow in and create some sort of folds in the fabric, especially on that voluminous skirt. So I've used just a few shades of red violet. And of course, when you're coloring with uh, Copic markers, you're going to go all over with those lightest colors and these darker colors really they're very minimally used. This is why when it comes time to re-ink your Copic markers, you'll need to re-ink the paler colors well before you need to re-ink those darker colors. I wonder if you knew that. Re-inking Copic markers is so easy to do. You can get tweezers to pull out the chisel nib, but you really don't need to. I just use my fingers. Hey, that saves me money that I can spend on new refills. And there will come a point where you kind of need to stop buying markers and start buying refills or perhaps investigate a refill service or, you know, go in with friends on refills if you have similar colors and share the cost and share the ink. So for that inner skirt section, I went with something much paler. And since according to her portraits, it looked like she was very much into the matchy matchy. I went with a pink hat. There is actually a very famous portrait of Marie Antoinette wearing a hat with feathers in it. And I have to be honest, for a minute, I was wondering, is that hair or is that hat? But given that her hair has those beautiful wavy lines and the hat has very straight lines, I erred on the side of hat over hair. And it worked because otherwise, where were those feathers coming from? And as soon as I saw the portrait, I realized it was a hat. So I'm going with a pale pink in the hat. Now I have, I am going to go in here shading in one direction and come back and in between those feathers in those two sections on the right, I am going to change up the shading because I really feel like the feathers would be casting a decent shadow on that hat, possibly more so than her hair. But you know what? There's no shading police who are going to come and get me you can shade wherever you want when it comes to Copic coloring isn't that awesome that's one of my favorite things about it you can put color wherever you like now I had always pictured her as a blonde because Kirsten Dunst plays her in a movie and she was blonde but in all of the paintings I looked at she really had kind of gray hair she the kids now are oh it makes me feel old but people are coloring their hair gray now and the rest of us who have naturally gray hair we're coloring it a different color but back then she had this hair and it, it I guess it could have been a white blonde a platinum blonde but honestly it looked gray to me so perhaps she you know nowadays we're just going back and following some old fashion trends 
So I went through and I did all the shading and I used my palest cool gray colors to do so. But then I thought this hair, it needs more texture. She really had a lot of texture in her hair. So I've gone back and I'm kind of dotting, dabbing my Copic marker all over. I've done it with the C1 and I've done it with the C0 as well. So that there's a little more texture in her hair showing that it's not just a hat now here's a look at the exploding box uh, that i presented at a birthday party and if you want to see how i made the rest of this project you can head over to the other video and check that out there'll be links down below to everything i used to make this and to the other video as well as my blog post i do hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for joining me today if you haven't already subscribed please do hit that subscribe button or perhaps give us a thumbs up and as always, I do hope you have a very crafty day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.